Good afternoon and welcome to the BRR Legal Brief, looking at the major legal issues affecting corporate Australia. My name's David Bushby and today we're looking at the government's move to boost the retail corporate bond market. And here with me to discuss today is Michael Hodgson, who's a special counsel at Dibs Barker. Welcome, Michael. Thanks, David. Michael, if we can just kick off, I guess, with a, a bit of a high-level look at uh, yesterday's announcement by Treasurer Swan. David, um, the Treasurer released a discussion paper yesterday um, seeking feedback from industry on a proposal to cut red tape and basically to help Australian listed companies to, to raise debt capital. Um, there are two main features. One is a, a reduced simplified prospectus um, and the other, which is quite important, which we'll come to, is reducing directors' liability on those prospectuses. Yeah, well we certainly will get to those points, but uh, one question that does spring to mind is why, I guess, in particular since the GFC, we've seen a move to more regulation and in some cases we've seen moves for more disclosure. Why is the government now looking to reduce disclosure? That's true. I mean, with the GFC, you know, obviously there has been a lot more sort of regulation. Um, over the last couple of years, the government and ASIC have also been working to, to help make it easier for investors to, to understand financial products. Mm. They've been doing a lot of work on um, prospectuses in terms of um, not necessarily reducing prospectus content generally, but to help make them easier to understand and more accessible to investors. And this new initiative um, is along a similar vein. Um, it started probably a couple of years ago. This has been on the government's agenda for a, for, for a few years. Um, in, no, in 2009, they commissioned a report, the Johnson Report, which looks into the financial markets. And um, that report concluded that um, our local corporate bond market is actually an area of relative weakness, which needs to be improved. And um, the report considered that one of the reasons for that is that um, local companies can get a lot of their short and medium term funding from, from banks um, and uh, they don't really need to go elsewhere for that s sort of short to medium term funding. However, for longer term funding, which is uh, more than 10 years, and which is attractive to them because there's less refinancing risk, um, for that sort of long term funding they actually have to go offshore um, because there are much more you know, deep and liquid um, debt markets offshore for that type of funding. And there's really, um, you know, very few sources of that sort of long-term funding in Australia. Um, large corporates generally don't have any difficulty getting that going offshore, um, but smaller companies that don't have a, an, you know, they're not investment grade, they don't have a credit rating, um, that's very difficult for them mm. and very expensive. So this, this measure is, is one part that the government is looking at to try and sort of uh, address that issue. The other point is that, um, which is related, is that companies have been telling the government that um, it's very expensive, it's very time consuming, uh, lots of due diligence in order to produce prospectuses mm -hmm. that are currently required. And, um, uh, and also directors are very concerned about their personal liability uh, for these prospectuses. So um, the government has obviously listened to, to that and they've come up with, um, with this proposal. Um, through ASIC they had a go at it 18 months ago through a, a class order for vanilla bonds mm. and um, in the 18 months since that was introduced there's only been one issue under that class order so it really hasn't worked mm. um, and as we'll come to shortly there are some there could be some reasons for that which they're trying to address with this proposal. Well Michael let's let's get to that now and get into a bit of the detail uh, of the proposals that are in the discussion paper can you run us through the main ones? Um, yeah, well, there are a number of um, criteria that are proposed would have to be met in order to get the, um, the benefit of this, um, of this reduced content prospectus requirement. The first one is that the, the issuer would have to be an Australian listed company and have been listed on the ASX for at least 12 months. Mm -hmm. So the market is aware of the company and, and there's a track record there. Um, up for discussion is whether the company needs to have a, um, a credit rating or be of investment grade or not. I think industry would probably be looking to for that not to be a requirement. Mm. So again, to broaden the you know the reach of this of this proposal, um, the bonds would need to be listed so that there's a, a liquid market for them, mm -hmm. um, and the bonds themselves would have to meet certain criteria. Some of these have been brought forward from the ASIC class order relief. So for example, um, Australian do dollar denominated, mm -hmm. there'd be a fixed term. 
um, they couldn't have any sort of t fancy conditions attached to them like convertibility, so they can't convert into other securities. Um, so hybrid securities, for example, they wouldn't meet these requirements. Um, but there are a couple of um, differences and um, I think they're trying to get a bit more flexibility into this proposal. Um, firstly, um, in terms of the 10-year requirement, under the asset class order, um, there's a maximum term of 10 years mm. uh, for bonds and that's proposed to be removed under this. So that should help uh, address the problem that I was talking about before, about mm. the gap in for long-term funding. The other thing is the class order requires a minimum capital raising of $50 million, mm. which um, you know, makes it difficult for smaller companies mm. to use that class order relief because they don't necessarily need that, that amount of funding. So that's up for discussion as well. Um, in terms of the prospectus itself, um, the proposal is to um, reduce the content requirement, given that the company's continuously li listed, there's a lot of information out there already. Yeah. So the focus is very much on the terms of the particular bonds mm. and the risks involved. Um, it's also proposed to standardise the, the content of the prospectus, like they'll prescribe the list of, a checklist of matters to be dealt with mm. um, and the sort of things that needs to be discussed. So mm. the aim with, with these measures is to improve the readability of the prospectus for investors. So to, perhaps they'll actually read them, um, and also um, to help um, standardise them so that they can be compared, mm. so one product can be compared with another one. And as I mentioned before, we've seen this, these sorts of developments happening already in, term, in, in relation to other products like uh, simple managed investment schemes and superannuation. So it's a similar sort of, uh, it's a development of that theme. Mm. Um, so hopefully that will produce um, shorter, easier to read prospectuses. And finally, um, the final sort of important feature, and it, and it is very important, is the proposal to remove director's liability. At the moment, um, under the Corporations Act, all, all prospectuses, uh, directors have um, civil liability um, for the whole contents of the prospectus. Um, so clearly the government is, is so desperate, dare I say, to, to promote this, um, you know, this market. Mm that they are willing to look at removing directors' liability from, um, from these types of prospectuses. Um, so that is quite a, quite a significant development. Well, there are uh, a number of things that are up for grabs. There's plenty in that discussion paper. So uh, it brings me to the question, do you foresee if these proposals are adopted, will we see an increase in issuance? Will they work? Um, yeah, look, I saw a quote this morning um, from a, a market participant that, um, that I think sort of captures it. This is evolutionary, not revolutionary. Um, I think it's a, a small step, and I think the government acknowledges that as well. Um, I, I think they are good measures, mm. and I think that it, that it will assist, but it's not, it's not the, the magic bullet. Mm. Um, so I think um, it addresses one part of the problem, but there are other issues that need to be addressed. And, and I think one of those is, is demand mm. for bonds both from Australian invest, uh, retail investors and also wholesale, Australian wholesale investors. Mm. I mean, on the retail side, um, a lot of re Australian investors love shares and I, they don't really get bonds mm. traditionally. Um, you know, they, they don't understand them, um, they're con they don't pay very much interest. I mean, why would you take money out of a bank account or term deposit risk-free getting 5% mm. to get 6% on a bond? Mm. So. I think there are, there's a, an education process for Australian retail investors mm. to, to understand bonds more. Um, the other thing is for wholesale, in, for wholesale investors like Australian super funds, mm. um, they, they only have, I mean the figure's been quoted, they only have 14% of their assets allocated to um, fixed interest. Mm. And that compares, that's half of the allocation of overseas funds. So there's, there's really um, um, potential there for a lot more investment to be put into into bonds. Mm. Um, so I think there's, there's areas there that need to be addressed as well in terms of I education. Um, so this is you know, one part of, uh, of solving that problem. Yeah. So um, I think the other, the other point is it, it'll be critical, I think, to, for, for this proposal to address the long-term debt requirement. Mm. I think if they put a, a maximum 10-year term on it, then I, I can't see it working. But 
if they sort of keep it flexible, then I think the potential there is for this to be an important step forward. Yeah. Well, a number of issues up for debate, obviously. What are the next steps we've seen? I guess the announcement come through yesterday. Yeah. What's the way forward in this issue? Yeah. Well, the government's looking for feedback from industry on, on, on this by um, the 10th of February mm -hmm. to 2012. And then following that, there'll be um, draft legislation. They haven't put a timing on that yet, but during the course of 2012, mm -hmm. there'll be draft um, legislation released and um, finalised. We'll certainly keep a close eye on the issue in the meantime and uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, really appreciate it Michael. Thanks Toby. And uh, listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us. We look forward to having your company for next week's Legal Brief.